Yeah. All right, we'll call the meeting to order. Commissioner Pike, the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. First item on the agenda is to approve our agenda. <coughs> Move. Move. Second by Lee, second by Gage, to approve the agenda. All in favor, speak by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carried. Judy Dash is up to talk about a bid opening for the annex roof and over review quotes for the AC unit at the 124th Street building. Good morning, Judy. Good morning. Kathy's got that here. Judy asked that we open these here. Looks like we received one bid for the roof from Hub City Roofing. We have our bid bond, and then the proposal is, looks like they're looking at $1.50 per board foot. Um, it's got a 20 year warranty, and it's $167,000 is their proposal. Does it sound about like what you thought it would be? Well, what's the price of rubber? <laughs> price of everything. Price of everything, right. Yes. Did you want to take time to review it? And yes, I would it? like to take time to review it. I'll Jason. move that we refer it to Judy for. She actually wants to award it this meeting to take yeah. a uh, 15, oh. 20 minutes. Because I want to see oh. if, it's, okay. if he's okay with, you know, actually when you order the rubber, if he's okay for it until it's delivered here. So I want to see that he's okay, that he's got, you know, that we can. Okay. So that's okay, we'll take a pause on this. Tim Rue, we'll do it. Yep. Refer action until you get back to this. Okay. All right. Now the you need his contact for us. Yeah. We can have this. Okay. I'll take it back. Okay. Motivation. Okay. Thank you. And then the evaporator coil went out on the 911 air conditioning unit. And, um, I just wanted to see how much it would cost just to do the coil part. It's an old unit though, then that was going to be like 6000 So I said, okay, give me what a new one would be. And so I got a couple quotes okay. to get it fixed. And then I'm going to have an economizer put on it so that we can run it at a lower temperature. Okay. Like a custom sheet metal is $12,936 and that's with the decommonizer. And then the other quote <coughs> is from Woodman with, with an economizer is $12,100. That's for all new units. A whole new unit, a five ton rooftop <coughs> and um, in a Pretty close. Yep. You want to give us a little bit before you make a recommendation? Or? No, I think we're pretty good. Okay. So, we have a recommendation of Clubman Asset? Yes. I love it. And then, can I um, have Dwayne sign the second? Okay, we have a motion by we. Second. Second by Spiker to approve the quote from Woodman. Refrigeration for twelve thousand one hundred dollars. Further discussion. <coughs> none. All in favor, say the public saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carried. All right. Can I have copies of those? Sure. Okay. Yeah, you just send them out. Yes. Thank you. Hey, Dirk, you got your map. You got the map. You got the map. He's coming in with a lot of stuff. Next item on the agenda is a bid opening <coughs> for fairgrounds and fairgrounds land lease and youth camp land lease. Do you want to open these? No, go for it. <laughs> we will start with the um, hay cutting land out at the fairgrounds. And 
And then there's some out at the campsite too. Out at it's both the fairgrounds and the. Yeah, we're going to open them separately. Oh. So we'll do just the um, land near the fairgrounds first. I think we do have three bids for that. How many acres was that, Kathy? Does that speak? Yes, it is 22 and then an additional 16. Yeah, so 38 acres. And this is for a uh, three year option. There'll be two additional one year options for 2023 and 2024. Um, so we'll have options to award that. The first bid is for $85 per acre, and um, it's Dustin, I think, is that Giese? Can you read that name? Grease, I think. G-R-I-E-S-E. -E. -E -E. what, what is it, Don? Uh, Dustin. The way I read it is Grease. Grease. Still <laughs> Dustin or Justin? I think it's Dustin. Yeah. Dustin. <coughs> we have another one, um, Larry Joe Ackerman at 71 per acre. And then our final bid is from Don Schumacher, and they're looking at $90 an acre. So, or the high bit, that is the high bid at $90 per acre. What was that name? Don Schumacher. Schumacher. Yeah. Our minimum bid was 60 per acre. <laughs> Unbelievable. Recommendation from the Fairgrounds Manager. Gotta go high. Mm -hmm. Move to accept the high bid of ninety dollars an acre. Motion by Feldheim. Second. Second by Weiss to accept the quote from <coughs> Don Schumacher for ninety dollars an acre for the Fairgrounds A land. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Next to the youth camp playground. We have multiple bids for the Hayland near the youth camp as well. This is approximately 21 acres um, near the Richmond youth camp. Our minimum bid here is $30 per acre. The uh, first bid is from Reed Albright. And we operate bid 35 per acre. The uh, second bid is Don Schumacher, and the bid is for 42.50 an acre. And that is the high bid at 42 percent. <coughs> Same recommendation? I think yeah. Move it. Motion by Weiss. Second. Second by Gage. All in favor, second by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. The motion carries. Let the hazing begin. We need help on an application. There you go. Move it. Do you need this back? No, can I have that? Yeah. Down? It's stunning, if nothing else. The yeah. Assessment is from the township. Yeah. yeah. All right, next item on the agenda is uh, the first reading, rezone ordinances 213 and 214. Kathy. Yes. So we'll start with ordinance 213. This is a zoning rezone request 
Um, applicant is Neil Bellica, looking to go from Agricultural Preservation District to Highway Commercial. The legal address is proposed, Outlot 1 and Outlot 2, B&B Outlots in the northeast quarter of Section 23, C-123 North, R-63 West of the 6 p.m. Move it. Second. Motion by Feldheim, second by Weiss. First reading of uh, Ordinance 213. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. <coughs> We'll do 214. This one is a zoning rezone request as well. Roger Spanier is an applicant looking to go from Agricultural Preservation District to Mini Ag in the Spanier Outlot A in northwest quarter of section 25 T123 North R60 west of the 5th p.m. Motion by Weiss. Second. Second by Gage. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carries. All right, next on the agenda, Dirk Rogers, Highway Superintendent, Applications, Practice, Seat, Load Limits, and Department Update. Hello, well, Dirk. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, yeah. Sweet. yeah, that's actually up in just in time to replace it in August again. But, <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, of it. but that, and we'll stay pretty close. Uh, I mean, even in uh, what have we been doing that now? Five, six years we've been doing the. Uh, yep that and it's not exact but it's been a pretty accurate outline I think so sure. far so yeah. it's a plan yep it's something you can point at it and the, the reality yeah. happens <laughs> it's a road map and you never know where a detour might show up that's right uh, first thing I have is right away for web I don't know how these got listed on there Kathy exactly but there is one for web and the rest are for Northern Valley yeah so if that Northern Valley is kind of all the same project we can just do yeah, I drew I even drew a fancy another little map today it's a big map there uh, this, this is the web water um, it's right north of up at Turnquist you know where the where road 6 crosses the elm they're just coming from the bottom down there where the existing service is that goes over to the farms and coming up and putting a water tap right on top of the hill there. I'm assuming it's for cattle, it's always mm -hmm. up there. It would be right there, is what they're talking about. I'll move it. Second. Right. Motion by Fiker, second by Weiss, to approve the web water occupancy. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay, motion carried. Right. <coughs> uh, the rest of these, uh, as Kathy just alluded to, are all Northern Valley. It's all that same big project. Um, so I went this way, see, see cool. what you guys thought about this one, this yeah. this method. But mm -hmm. So there's a total of nine of them, and when he puts those in, excuse me, yeah, nine of them, he puts them in by road segment. Or I should say he puts them in by road. So for instance, there's one permit that covers, where's, uh, like road 13. There's a couple miles over here on the lake road, you know, and then a mile there by the sheep guy. Uh, Guy. Yeah, <laughs> one mile out on the lake road there. God dang it, Howard. Oh, no. And then uh, up by Putney for a couple miles. Mm -hmm. it, in general, all this is over in the Groton area, over from 18, and then up here uh, east of Hecla, you know, up uh, where we got that road 20 and 20A and all that. It's just updating the same service. And it's a continuation of the what I think I brought in nine before. Mm -hmm. So <coughs> I'm good with it all. You're just building the spider web. Yep. Move, Move it. Second. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're at. <laughs> <laughs> Motion by we, second by Feldheim to important. approve the Northern Valley. And you know, just let me make a comment, take it as you will, but it's pretty cool that because these are some obscure I mean, we're in Brown County, which, you know, we're in South Dakota, however you want to compare it to stuff, but we've got some pretty rural areas that are getting updated broadband to them, you know, in the county, and that's always good. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. All in favor, <coughs> you're probably saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. <coughs> Motion carry. <laughs> um, load limits. I'd like to put them on. I'd recommend we put them on in the morning, starting tomorrow. Warming up. So, I suppose I need a motion for that. Move to put the load limits on starting uh, 8 o'clock. 16th? Yep. Motion by Feldheim. Second. Second by Weiss. Do we have someone comment on that? Commenting? 
someone out there commenting on that? Maybe not. I thought I heard a I just thought it was something that on the system, yeah. but it didn't. Yeah. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion carries. A little limits of one tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Okay, a little update on a few things. <coughs> We're crushing in the yard. Um, if you're ever driving by the highway shop, pop in and look at it. It's kind of cool. It's uh, taking the old concrete and making it into some aggregate. So we'll be doing that starting, we started yesterday, at least a month. We'll be doing that. Um, and we'll be running long hours because that machine's 35000 a month to rent it. Mm -hmm. So we're, uh, get her done. Keep her moving. Um, next, no, that's two weeks, there's a bridge lighting. So two weeks, we'll get, I told you last year that that bridge was probably going to leapfrog the one at Sand Lake, and now that's happened, but I'm not going to complain as long as we can get some stuff built. But this bridge right here will, I believe the 29th, we're going to have a bridge lighting. And uh, the timing's good this time of year, and to still, still get a bridge contract for this year. Yeah, yep. And that one is an 80-20 because we already paid... Uh, we're paying 20% of the full cost, mm -hmm. uh, new mic, uh, because we paid to design it instead of running it through the whole program. It took about two years off the process, and that's also one of the reasons why it, I'm having some right-of-way issues on this one still that I think will get resolved, but that's why this one leapfrogged it. Um, is the other one north there by Columbia, is that going to get done this year then, or is that? I hope to. I mean, I expect that it will, but... I have to get a couple things accomplished in the next couple weeks or we're going to get too far into the year. To what get are the easements with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service? One with we'll them and then got the family on the, a family on the other side that I got a few challenges with. Um, nothing against U.S. Fish and Wildlife, but accessibility to those folks lately hasn't been very good and then they've had some turnover up here. Um, yeah, it's kind of unbelievable, kind of wacky, but we'll we'll get it. It's not a it's not a contentious legal thing, mm -hmm. you know. We're going to eminent domain or something, <laughs> and besides that, you can't take it from the federal government anyway. So, uh, she's, she's got the authority to sign it this week. We don't know. That's exactly. I mean, I didn't want to put it that way, but well, that's that's a little bit of it, and mm -hmm. that's certainly a factor there. So, um, we're today's our last day of hauling because road limits are going on tomorrow. Um, and we've already got uh, four phone calls so far this morning because, well, I just need to get my grain in, you know, and I, I didn't know it was coming. <laughs> so, and the record for someone asking when load limits are coming off is three days. Mm -hmm. So we'll see if by Friday anyone has called to ask when they're coming off, which will be May 1st, okay? So, uh, we're still designated, there'll be some designated uh, all roads. Uh, roads that will not have load limits to get in and out. Like last year, 14 had them on and 11 was open. Yeah. So I guess, you know, some of those people kind of asked that question and I... Let's recap because you make a good point, Doug. That the perception on that deal last year was that it was a yearly deal or all of a sudden it's this change. If you go back to when load limits were first put on in the county, this is how it was. And until 1986 when that bridge got posted at uh, the hall pit, that 14 was never open. And uh, actually it's more of it's open now than was ever open. But anyway, it's the same way it was last year. There's one route into every town. Every every town has a way to get in there. And and for, for people that think we're screwing them, we have to haul from 10, we being the county. We have to go from 10 and I have to, we have to get into our stockpile site, which we put on an unposted road down here on purpose. But you know how we have to get there? We gotta go to Stratford, come off the state highway to get in there. And we're gonna do it just like we expect everybody to do it. So that change is actually the way it should be because there shouldn't be two open roads in Columbia. It's, that's not the deal. There's one every each place. And so it's back uh, same way it was last year. The only change that I know of in the past few years is that one on 14, you know, where we changed it. You know, there's a few of these roads that we post or that we milled up that are gravel where we took the posting off them. Once you mill them up, you know, we'll, we'll change them to where they're not posted. And I won't say specifically where, but we have a guy that was a constant 
I was not uh, concerned, had a lot of concerns <laughs> over the years. Uh, and we haven't got the road paved in front of his house, his farm. I expect to. I'm planning on it. But he did call me and said, say, that's going to be posted then if you pave it. And I said, well, yeah. I said, we've been just leaving it open because it's gravel right now. Oh, hmm. Well, so now he's weighing out whether he wants to have the dust and be able to haul you around or... Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just kind of interesting that way. Yep. So, anyway... Uh, but it's the exact same it was last year. I don't I don't plan unless we have some major shift in something. I don't plan on on changing them again. Or I don't have you know I'm always open to suggestions somewhat. But well, I think last year the confusion was is 14 was always open, 11 was closed, and 11 came open. And 14 was closed up until what the uh, water treatment plant. Right. Yeah. And I think that was the confusion last year. Was I think I was just trying to clarify that so people yeah. just realize that. No 14's got load limits on it. Yes, uh, and 11's always been open. It's just the bridge that was closed. Well, yeah. You know. So, um, but yep, they're going up tomorrow, and they'll be just like they were last year. Pretty good. Okay. So, so depending on how the next month goes and how much moisture we do or don't get, so. Yeah, I, I think we'll be okay. The thing you're going to get now for a while is we'll have minor drainage issues because the culverts will be frozen and the water will start coming before they get thawed out and people will think that they're going to, you know, mm -hmm. lose their farm. Yeah, but it's usually a temporary situation. Um, but other than that, we're we're just we're going to crush. We're going to do a little bit of stockpiling with load limits are on. And How's the Elm Spillway coming along? Pretty good. Um, they on schedule as far as they know? They they were supposed to have been done by now, but they got 30, uh, 30 weather days from what I understand. Stands the reason that if you're going to have a project that runs through the winter, pretty yeah, good chance winter. you're going to have some weather days. Yeah. Um, so they they were planning on being done. They're coming down the home stretch. We had a little, little bit of uh, discussion yesterday about the load limits on Road 5. And I'm putting them on right now. And I gave everybody the out because the, re the reason that I was kind of steadfast about it and that what's going to happen is they're going to have to haul smaller loads of mud up there. Um, because only one contractor in this whole process ever brought up the load limit. And that was back a year ago when they were bidding it. And I was pretty tickled that somebody had enough, okay, somebody's paying attention. Right. Didn't hear about it again until yesterday. And people saying that we were creating them a problem because <laughs> they didn't uh, anticipate it. Anticipate it. Yeah. So I don't know if there's, I said, I just said, look, this is my decision. And I generally, I'm pretty black and white. When we put them on, they're on, and that's that. Um, we're following them. We yeah, and we, we follow them and everybody else. So so that started off with the concrete supplier. And then I got a call from the general contractor. And I talked, the state called me the other day about it. And I was a little stern in my reaction. So they just said, well, it's whatever you guys want to do. Now, having said that, if you guys start getting beat up from the other side and it starts coming in from the state or something, and they're asking, what the hell is your highway superintendent doing? let me know but if someone would have contacted me like a month ago and said hey we're going to be into the load limit time what can we do it would have been a completely different discussion mm -hmm. but i do not like it just like the four phone calls i got this morning i just have a little more work to do well guess what we do too yeah. we have a little more work we'd like to do but we're not going to be able to do it because load limits are on, so. and we're not looking for more to do because there aren't road limits because the road limits didn't get put on mm -hmm. right right so so if they'd like to pay for any damage, we can have that conversation. Right. If they want to, but not just call me the day before they go on and go, oh, geez. Yeah. So anyway, that's my comment about that. But other than that, I, it's it's moving along well. Oh, the, I have to get a few things kind of squared away with, we're having conversations with, uh, I, I have been with the state as far as the road project on the west side. And everything's moving forward. It's it's more like a little bit of cat herding though than uh, overly organized. And uh, so we're gonna. I think we're touching base here, possibly this week. And of course with uh, 
what's his name, uh, the, the guy that went up to the governor's office. Because Jared Johnson has been running the office right now. Ryan Bruner. Ryan Bruner. I'm sorry, I couldn't think of his name. we got to just get everybody, make sure we're on the same page. And then once, I just want assurance that they have the money there, and then once that happens, we're going to go one of two ways. We're either going to have a full-blown project or we just come in and bid a project like we would any other project. And we're gonna we're gonna do we being the county are gonna administrate it all, but we're not gonna pay for it. And then, uh, or else, I will come in and bid rental equipment, which I didn't do this year. We'll bid rental equipment then and use those numbers to build it. I just haven't quite. Mm -hmm. And here in the next couple three weeks, we should be able to kind of figure out where that's gonna land. But that's that's where we're at with it. It's moving forward, probably not as quick as you like, but. We had like four different levels of government involved, so it's not going to be smooth and quick. Yeah, take a while. Yeah. <laughs> so. Okay. All right. Question. Yep. Uh, 127th Street. There's a 127th Street. There's a mile of gravel that goes over 281, and it's paved all the way through except for that mile. Okay. 127. I'm lost already. Oh. Okay, 127. Yeah, on the east side? Yeah. Yep. Is that going to be yes. paved again then? It won't be paved. We'll bother it this year. Okay. A little bit of surface. Yeah. Because my argument of you can't drive off the end of it without driving on pavement doesn't apply there, so i got to put that one back. We either had to put it back or got to mill up East Shore, and we just put East Shore to hard surface, so milling it up is kind of stupid. So yeah. that's the only mile that isn't paved up to 281, right? Okay, I'm uh, I'm in the wrong spot. 127. Where, where are you talking? Uh, I was out at Richmond. Yeah. Oh, where are you talking, Doug? You were going uh, west to six. Coming to Rock Island. Uh, uh, Wayne Miller. Oh yes, the re that'll get milled up. Our mill broke. We got ha we got halfway through it, and and our yeah. our mill well, isn't that paved up. all the way to 281 except that mile? Yes. And then if you go west or go east, though, it's gravel. Where's that at? Right by the bridge on, from the Jim River Bridge on the county line. Right way down, down there. Oh, way down, not 127. No, I'm sorry. Okay. Yes. Down the Spink County line. Yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah, yeah, where it drops down into the, In that down area. into the yeah, yeah, bottom, so to the Jim we'll, River bottom. Yep. We'll have one mile of gravel there. Yep. Yeah. It'll all stay one mile of gravel? That's the plan right now. Is Wayne getting on you? Yeah, he called and he said, well, that's a, they may have traveled to 281. Oh, yeah, it's the busiest road in the county. <laughs> 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 I don't go down there, so I went, no, I'll be honest with you. Spain, Spain County uses screen gravel on this side of it. That's how important that is. They don't even use good gravel on it. So, and, and actually, I get along good with Wayne, except that I got tired of him and tried to Watch call a commissioner, and I think that's what happened. <laughs> uh, well, I, I, well, I, I you did know. call it. I did say I would talk to you and find out what the plan is. That's I because I won't call me because he knows me like he well, knows Dirk. We uh, <laughs> we did a. I will tell you, we did a crappy job, and we were fighting it at the end of the year, and then our mill broke, and we're over getting the mill fixed, but. Uh, we're going to mill up the rest of that mile, and I intend for it to stay gravel. And actually, I think Spink County will probably take care of it for us, is what we'll do. Um, because the dividing line is, there's a gray area down here because it's shared responsibility. Because of these two miles over here that we get, it's in Brown County, but Spink County takes care of those for us, too. So, But anyway, yeah, that's it'll be paved real nice here, as you can see. And, 2026. Yeah. So I was probably just filling out the thing, but I mean that's going to get paved. This whole thing will get paved in the near future. It's about all. It's everything else is pretty good down south, but this. But yes, that mile is, and I could be talked out of it, but uh, it goes over one mile to his driveway, and there's any other track that can go by there. Well, I mean it's the, it's a through road, of course, but save money. And do the half I tell mile. you what, I'll get, I'll, I'll have John put a, we'll put a traffic counter down there. <laughs> yeah, I gotta say, save the money there and put it out from uh, Richmond State Park west to the 
West Shore Drive. Boy, well, you, you just, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go there. I know. Don't go there. I know. That's that you know, what, we'll know just, what's next. I'm just happy, to start. To, just happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> now we know you're lying. <laughs> so. No, that's, uh, well, fin I'm glad, actually, I'd forgotten that we, that was, that was a battle trying to do that. That drum got out around on that milling machine. Really? Yeah. That's not good. No. Nope. So, twenty-five grand. Very expensive machine to keep up. Twenty-five grand to replace that. Unbelievable. But it costs uh, ten thousand a mile to hire it done. So, might as well replace it. Yeah, we use it for. You know, we don't use it for everything we do, but. So. Okay. You're in the business. All right. Thanks, Art. Thank you guys. Thank you, sir. Have a great day. You as well. Thanks for stopping. Yeah. Next time on the agenda. Um, this bottom one is kind of out of sequence, too. We want to go to nine. And so better normal. That, that one is nine to nine. Oh, it should be, um, that last one should be 915 to okay. 920. Okay, I just didn't know if it got added. I late. moved it to the bottom of the okay. agenda. Okay. All right, next item on the agenda is Scott Mines, emergency manager. Morning, Scott. Good morning. Purchasing some equipment. <coughs> Purchase some equipment. I got, uh, I didn't make copies from everybody, but I got enough, so if you want to pass that around. Um, we um, we've been working or, uh, in the in the drone business, I guess, for about ten years now. Our current drone has <laughs> served its lifespan. We can't get uh, batteries stuff for it anymore. Um, so we're uh, looking to upgrade and, and purchase a new uh, uh, system. Oh, excuse me. So I uh, that's the system that uh, that we're looking at. Um, a couple uh, quick elements. Um, um, the company that we use is out of Sioux Falls or Harrisburg. That's the one we've been with for many years. Um, they did send us uh, actually three quotes. Um, the problem with those, with a couple of them, one is one didn't meet our specifications that we wanted. Um, the second one is actually, if you give one of those to Kathy for me, please, for her record. Um, one of them is now the company is somewhat being uh, banned by. Uh, the U.S. And, and or the federal government and the state government because it's China equipment, um, so that left us with one, um, and it actually met our, our requirements. So, um, unless somebody has questions, I would I would uh, I would uh, ask to approve the uh, the quote for ninety two hundred dollars um, to Elite Unmanned to upgrade our our system and and get us a new drone coming that would uh, push our our uh, search and rescue team back in the in the business again. Did you have this in your budget? This yes. Yep. Yeah, this I is under remember. our budget. Okay. Um, I think we had 95 budgeted, so we're a little okay. under now. We may we may look at purchasing uh, uh, some additional equipment to uh, to do some live feeding. Um, that was one of our requirements, but uh, um, we'll see what our budget looks like later in the year here if we can. So are you saying this is an American made? This is an American made. With all kinds of Chinese and Japanese components. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. <laughs> like everything else. Like, like everything drone. else, yep. Does the old drone have any surplus value? I, I haven't, I, it, it may have a little bit, Commissioner. Um, I haven't, haven't went down that path. I'm, I'm maybe hoping that maybe if that happens, we can buy that extra piece of equipment. That's about $2,500. Um, so I haven't, like I said, I haven't went down that path yet, but we certainly will negotiate that. Okay. Move. Motion by Weiss. Second. Second by Feldheim to approve the purchase of the drone from Elite Unmanned. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion carries. Perfect. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you, Scott. Thank you. Thanks, Scott. That was easy. Next item on the agenda, Fair Capital Improvements. Good morning, Rachel. Good morning, guys. And Mike. Taking the time. So I'm going to go down a couple orders. Some of these are in your basics on the bottom, but just in case you had questions, I thought I'd address them. you got an extra one, Rachel? Are you... I'll share with Mike. So the first one is just the um, contracts that we have passed through the fair board. First one's golf carts, traffic lights. I have copies, Kathy, but did you print off copies or do you want me to sign I did print off. Okay, great. Signature. Um, as you'll see, the prices went up. We expected that with everything else going up. And then the third one is uh, 
one of the entertainment contracts. So just a note that a lot of times on those entertainment contracts there's a confidential confidentiality note in them. So we don't mind telling people what it is, but we just kind of don't want it published and stuff because they um, get really mad when they're trying to negotiate at other venues. So just a heads up on those three things when you get to that on the agenda. Um, capital improvement wise, the first thing I wanted to talk about was electrical upgrades. So what we had done was put out a, looked for our uh, proposals on these four items. I've got copies of those. I emailed you guys about this a um, couple months ago been in the work. If you have questions, that's kind of what we sent out. We got the three bids and they were all over the board. Um, so this is not something we have budgeted for, but the, the board and the staff and fair grounds all got together and agreed these are things that need to, need to be done in order to keep moving forward. Um, so bottom line, we're going to take that east parking lot and rewire it so that that works. Last year we had to have a generator there to keep that going. We're going to figure out where that break is and fix that. Also, down the road, this is not included in that proposal, but the parking to the far, very far east, just north of where the new ground is, we need to get some lighting here. That is not, like I said, in this, but just for safety reasons, in the dark after the concerts, we need to get some, so we're kind of looking at maybe some portable lights to try to get that lit and dark. Um, this RFP also includes uh, a number of poles that need to be replaced, some outlets that need to go on the expo and things of that nature. So. If you guys were inclined, I would make a recommendation that we go through Jim Cramp as the weather gets nice and have him make some of those upgrades. Wow, what's there a difference in, in price? Unbelievable. What I've been told from a couple people in the community is some we're not getting the bids we used to get because we've asked for bids before and then not done anything with them. So some people are no longer bidding because they don't think we'll do anything. <laughs> But Jim's um, very familiar with the grounds. He's done work for us before, and I think he'd do a good job on this. And I think you said last week at the fair board meeting that the uh, the other quotes was more of a total replacement versus going in and finding out where the brakes are and just repairing them, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <coughs> What's your recommendation? It is. Oh, second. Okay, we have a motion by we, second by Fighter to approve the uh, cramp electric quotes for electric upgrade. So what that would do then, Dwayne, is um, it's not in our budget, so you could do it one of two ways. It could come out of that capital improvement fund, or we could try it. When I talked to Kurt, the only extra thing he budgeted for in 2022 is the mower that we're going to be purchasing. So I didn't know the best route to go because we definitely want to use our current budget before we tap into that capital improvement. Um, but I won't know that till the end of the year. So is there a method that I just put it in my own budget and then at the end of the year we transfer from the capital or is it best to just take it directly out of there? So I guess my first question, are we just talking these electrical upgrades, not the camping pedestal? Well, we can talk about that next. It's a motion, is it just for the electrical upgrades? Yeah. Okay. Um, I guess if any of these projects cause a fair budget to go over budget procedurally, we have to hold a public hearing. Um, and acknowledge to supplement that budget. We cannot have budgets over budget at year end. Right. Um, if the board wants to use that capital improvement money, that's just a motion from the board to use those funds. Even if the budget goes over budget because you use the capital improvement money, you still have that public hearing, regardless of how the project is funded. So it's best to have that part of the motion now to use the, that capital improvement fund? If you want to, right. but if it could be absorbed in the budget or maybe only go over budget $5,000 at the end of the year then would you need to use that capital improvement money for the full amount? So I think it's cleaner just to wait and do the supplement because you may have other expenses that come up that might fall into that towards the end of the year and if you can absorb them because something else changes and it's not necessary. So we'll make sure. one blanket supplement at the end of the year once we know how the numbers are. Sure. Do you see a drawback with that any kind, Rachel? As long as you guys are comfortable with it, you've seen all the prices going up so you know that it's going to be a rough year. Um, yeah. But as long as, we, and I'll keep a tally of some of these special projects and at, at the end of the year let you know this is what we got from it and you can decide at that point where it comes from, whether it's contingency so, or whether And this and a couple of these would truly fall into that capital it improvement. It would, absolutely. Would, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And that's a good point too, if, they're, if you're only over a couple thousand, contingency would be a good option. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. It wouldn't necessarily yeah. be forced to have to take it out yeah. of the 
capital improvement uh, fund either. I mean, we can take it out of contingency if it doesn't get yeah, out ridiculous. Of hand, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I don't have a problem with taking it out of that. It's just if we have to do the hearing three, four different times, so we could use it at once. Yeah, we have other uh, public hearings we're going to need to have as well for it. Sure. Okay. Well, the hope is that doing some of these things now will prevent the cost later. We wrote a check, I believe it was twenty-five or thirty-five thousand to move for some improvements that were done last summer prior to the fair. So hopefully that number will be a little less because there are three-year contracted electrician out there. And, that, and I know, you know, because the, the, the fair is a peak use time and, and you try and anticipate that, but I, I recall several years ago we had a transformer out there that was having issues with it was being packed with ice just to keep it cool enough to keep it running. So you know, trying to do some of these things proactively to get ahead of it is money well spent. Well, another thing you have to keep in mind in all of this, if this is an improvement to the fair grounds, I mean, it's a direct mm -hmm. asset to the fair itself, but the any other events that go on out there, whether it's the car races or anything else, they're getting a benefit out of this improvement too. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Have we voted on that? Uh, yes, it was okay. uh, okay. Lisa Spiker. Uh, yep. um, yep. Made the motion for the expenditure. Okay. Okay. We called for the vote. Okay. Okay. Then the second one is Northern Electric. This one we're going to go ahead and and do if you're good with it. Mm -hmm. uh, Five thousand dollars. They can increase the capacity of the transformer that feeds. So this is the new land we acquired. The hope is because 4-H we've got some issues with some bigger campers and some folks that don't fit any longer in the size of the spaces that are over here. We've offered them to come over here because we're hoping to do one more line of 20 here, a road, and then 40 more spots. So this will be a combination of, I don't want to say new spots, but they'll be new to the people we may have to move because we've just gotten so congested here. We hate to keep kick people out of their spots, but these campers have went from like 30 feet to 45 feet. There's no room to drive there in some cases. We're not doing anything this year as far as forcing people to move, but we're trying to create the, the idea of, hey, let's be a good neighbor. You're overflowing into your neighbor's lot. These were intended to be 15 by 30 foot spaces, and you're shoving a 45 foot camper in there. Um, so that would be what the the 5,000 for Northern Electric has said they would come in and increase the capacity for those 60 more spots. And then in addition, what I'd like to do is start trying to get some of these pedestals in. This fluctuates day to day where you can get them and what the lead time is. A lot of these places it's 24 to 26 weeks out, so I don't even know that we'll get them, more, uh, let alone get them installed by the fair. But I think it would be important to have them on hand. If You're I talking could. about the pedestals? Yes, yeah. yeah. Um, so if you guys were good with it, I would ask for authorization to, and, and like I said, this might already change since I got the numbers, but if you could set me an amount in that 15 to 17,000, just give me a budget and I'm free to go get those um, pedestals. Like I said, I could just do it through my regular budget, but here again, it's kind of a capital improvement project and we're trying to balance. We'd love to have 60 brand new spots and get some people off of that 700 person waiting list, but, but the reality is, we may have to use a bunch of them for people that are too big and we need to move. So we want to take care of the folks that are there first before we bring in more overload. Right. Any questions on those proposals there? The hope is you can backfill with somebody who's got a little less sophisticated needs into some of that area. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, and you have the same thing with the folks with horses and the rest of that stuff too. It's no longer even bringing in trailers with two horses in. They get the whole 40 foot trailer with. Uh, so the 60 pedestals, what do they generate for revenue at, for the fair that week? Is it um, those ones will be $160. I believe it's 160 for the week. So we've kind of got the same exact same situation then with this, whether to take it out of capital improvement we do. Mm -hmm. or whether to take it out of the regular And budget. the third one will be the same. Why don't I talk you through that one and yep. you can decide if you want one over the other. The, the last thing I'm looking at is the beef barn. Um, last year we did do get quotes for that, Kurt has said. It has went up significantly. This would be if you decide to go this route. It was about $24,000 a year ago when we got a quote from um, we really want to kind of do something for our, for our livestock folks out there. And one of the biggest problems we've been hearing about the last few years is the being able to cool that beef barn. By putting one inch of foam insulation on the roof of that beef barn, the thought is that that would really uh, significantly reflect that sun off of the top of it and keep the animals cool. 
you know, it's a lot of money for one week, and but but the other part is, you know, a little bit of insulation won't hurt either when we're storing all those, um, you know, campers, those pontoons in there in the winter. So I had one person ask me, is it worth putting that money into that beef barn when it's so old and, you know, is it is it something we can replace down the road? Why repair it? But when you look at the overall structures on the fairground, the beef barn is sound. It's not going to be on the top of the list to be replaced. I think you're going to look at a grandstand, a home arts building, a new clubhouse before you look at a beef barn. So by doing this, I think we're just prolonging the life of that building because we're not going to be able to uh, replace it anytime soon. And I didn't even know he's going to be here, but you guys know Mike Russell. He's on our fair board as well, so I'm sure he would take any questions. He's been on there quite a few years, and he knows probably more about a lot of this stuff than I do. So did, did I miss anything, Mike? No, nope, you're good. Okay. I don't know as much about the beef farm, per se, but all the electrical and camping and that stuff, I'm certainly well versed. How much did you say the beef farm was? Twenty grand a couple years ago. It was twenty four thousand last year. My best guess, talking to people, is it's going to be in that thirty four to thirty five thousand. That's why I thought we need, we got to RFP it if we're going to do it. And so those are the capital projects I'm looking at for twenty twenty two that I would put a, a high priority on. Um, Maybe I've got a conflict because I've got grandkids that have got calves in there, and I'll tell you what, boy, in the middle of the middle of the season or the fair. Boy, oh boy, that gets hot in there and the air doesn't move very good. And it's just, it'd be nice to have some protection or some from the hot sun. Well, I have kind of a dumb question because I don't know much about much, but you know, hot air rises, so the fact that there's spray and insulation would, would it make more sense to try and exhaust the hot air out than prevent the heat from coming in by insulating the roof? Then and I'm just thinking, that's you know. A, that's a good point. The next piece that we've been doing is punching. You've noticed those windows on the side yeah. of it to try to get more air flow yep. through there. So I think down the road, the next piece of it would be to do more of those, like roller type windows to make it more open air on the side and then to reflect. Exhaust the heat. Exactly, yeah. yeah. I okay. think that is a good point. I think they're all pieces that need to be done, but sure. when yeah. I talked to Kurt, he thought this would be the highest priority on the livestock site. No, they, they have good. Uh, they have set up some big uh, portable great big fans to try to move some air through there too, which I think uh, you know my experience with a well insulated building I mean I've got in my shop that uh, has got six inch walls insulated and the ceiling is um, very well insulated. That building stays cooler in the summertime because the heat doesn't get in it right sure. it's sure. protected you know, that makes um, sense. You know, yeah, and we could always reject them, but I would I would encourage you. I would like to see you go forward with the RFPs, but I'd also encourage you for one inch and two inches. Oh, okay, I can see do that. What, see what the price difference is, because once you go through all the trouble of clearing the building out and prepping it and doing all the rest of that stuff, um, there's additional expense. But the end, they, they need to do it two inches, and, and three is probably overkill for this one. But um, I'd be interested to see what one and two inches. Sure. The comparison prices for that. Because one of the local vendors, the the one from last spring, so one year ago, was um, twenty thousand eight hundred and eight dollars to do one inch. Yeah, no, it probably isn't a bad idea to get an option on one or two inches. Yeah, I'd actually talked to one of these guys at the home show a couple of weeks ago, and yeah, the price is gone, uh, but yeah. the value is still there. All right, we have to go back and act on the Northern Electric uh, quotes. I'll move that. Second. Motion by Fikert, second by Weiss to approve the Northern Electric quote. All in favor, six, five, say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carried. Next, the camping pedestals. I um, assume you would uh, recommend the low quote. I Next. would, but like I said, those might have changed in the lead time. So if you guys are comfortable with it, giving me the authority of. 17,000, like put a roof on it and I'll just get as much as I can in the quickest amount of time for the okay. amount that you guys set. Um, I know the local ones, Jim's was available now, but those other ones that are cheaper are kind of online, so I'm a little hesitant to use online, but I want to call them direct to make sure I have pictures of what they're sending and do all that before I... And since Cramp is doing the electrical upgrades, it might 
might make right make good sense to use him. Those well, spots would be rented out this year then, because they were in. They if we can get them installed, yeah. so if we can get them on site and get so them you're, installed, so you're that'll be. You're going to generate 9,600 revenue out of 160 spots and 160 bucks. So you're really not talking a full seventeen thousand. You're going to generate that revenue this fair if we get the spots offset. And, and the one thing you got to remember is I'm piecemealing it. So the the five thousand is separate. The camping pedestals. The piece we're not missing is the electrician to come in, install the pedestals, sure. and connect it. So that piece is not in any of these numbers. But I'll get. You know, it's sometimes easier just to get them on site when you're like, well, it could be five months out. It could be seven months out. Let's get them here and then do the well, next. Well, isn't Jim Tramp? He's on grounds electrician doing it. Not this year. Oh, not this year. Moose won that um, oh. for three years. So they're on, this will be second year of a three year contract with them. Oh, with who, who's got it? Troy Holfer with Moose. Moose oh, Electric. Okay. okay. Yeah. And Jim used to be with Moose. Then he went out on Oh. Okay. So okay. I'd make a motion to authorize up to 17,500 authority, spending authority for that item. Move it. Or okay. second. Okay. We have a motion from Moose, second by Fiker. To authorize the expenditure of up to seventeen thousand five hundred on camping pedestals. Yeah, that's perfect. Further discussion. Hearing none. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Now the beef barn RFP. Authorize those. Oh, so that's the basically RFP. just setting a. Authorize dates, right? RFP, yeah. yeah, we can um, authorize the publication and set the hearing date. And did you want to do the one inch and two inch? Yeah. Or? Option. I would say one inch with a two inch option, and we can decide which one. Yeah. I'll move it. Second. Second by our motion by Piker, second by Weiss. To approve the RFP for the beef farm spray installation. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Thank you guys. I appreciate it. And then just quick, some other updates. We are in the process of contracting with the Cowboy Channel and PRCA to broadcast live the Dakota Bank Stampede Rodeo. Um, basically, it's going to be a wash. They give us a little kickback. It's a thousand bucks for each performance, so two thousand for the two nights for allowing them to come in and stream it or broadcast it. Um, and then it will cost us about sixteen hundred bucks plus hotels to get TMS. You remember we contacted them with our lights and stuff to bring an extra cameraman and the camera for the slack that we need for broadcasting. So kind of exciting. It's just a one-year thing. If we love it, we'll do it again. If we hate it, we'll never. How do much it. does it cost to get it on RFD? What's that? How much would it cost to get us on RFB? I don't know. Huh? The rural oh, television channel. I don't know. We could, RFD. We could check into 131. it. 131. <laughs> Give me a contact. I'll call. That's a cowboy channel. Oh, uh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> you to be careful about royalties because then you have people who stay home and watch it. That's true. Well, that's what, that was one of the concerns um, the fair board brought up. Depends though. on how much Fiker Cattle Company would like <laughs> to <laughs> 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 Well, I mean, I, you know, how do you know unless you... Yeah throw the question out there. Yeah. I have no idea. They promote rural, I'll tell you, unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, they struggle to get keep everything going. Sure. <laughs> Almost like South Dakota Public Broadcasting. They struggle too. Something terrible. Yeah. Uh, and then the second thing is just that Clear Bay policy. You might have heard a little bit about that last fair. So the fair board did agree unanimously to enforce that. Um, they kind of did it a little bit last year to kind of get people's feet wet with it, but this year it will be all clear bags. And so um, we wanted a united front on that. The second thing we wanted to make sure everybody is aware of is just the camping concerns, and I touched on that a little bit with the 4-H. Nobody's getting kicked out of anywhere this year, but there it is becoming more and more of an issue as far as, you know, m more than one air conditioner and the sizes of the campers are getting bigger and they're causing trip breakers and all sorts of issues. So what we're going to do during um, Fair Week is kind of go in and see which ones are truly causing the issues and, and come to you guys with a proposal if, if we need to forcefully move people or if we just kind of roll with it knowing it's a risk. So uh, we don't want to go, the, the camping committee has meant extensively on this trying to find that happy medium. In 2018 is when they added the contracts with those actual lot sizes. I mean, it's kind of obvious when you pull in how big they are, but it was never in the contract what the size of your lot is. And so to try to keep everybody happy and, and those that are overflowing into other areas, it's just a tough thing because a lot of people have been there since the 80s and they don't want to move, but they're definitely too big. So we want you guys on board with us, though, because there will be calls. <laughs> there will I be unhappy people. If I have a question. Yeah. I have a, had a couple calls. Sure. And their concern was the 32 seems to be a real common camper 
footage. Sure. And their question was, how did they come up with 30? And that's, and I said, I can't answer that, but I, I think 32 foot is a very common footage versus a 30 foot. Sure. So I guess I would ask that that probably look into that if 32 seems to be a common denominator, instead of maybe limited at 30, maybe there's more 32 foot than there's 30 foot, I guess was what. That's a good, that's a good point. I will bring that I don't back. think two feet would make her break one way or the other, but I think you're asking a lot of people that have 32 foot to move out, and I realize you got to put a number somewhere. I mean, yeah. well, what's 32? Well, I got a 34. I got a 36. Yeah. Some yeah. point in time, but I guess continues to move. <laughs> I guess I would find, like to know though if 32 is more of a common type footage for a camper. Okay. Yeah, I'll do some digging on that. I think you're right. I know mine's 32, and I'm in violation. <laughs> well, and I, I so Jeff and I said we would either bring, we have a smaller one we're going to oh. have to bring, or we're going to have to bring. Who did you get the call from? This is Jeff. Jeff is getting home with me. Jeff, 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 Jeff called me. No. Jeff called me. No. Jeff called me. I'm all about full disclosure yeah. here. <laughs> I, I basically did have calls from people that had 32 foot campers. As yeah. 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 And it seems like that seems to be the common denominator is 32 feet for some reason. I didn't have anybody call me on 36 to 34. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they, know, they know they're way over. Yeah. I think, I think 28, 28 foot is a very common camper size too, and we're two foot over that. So. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I'll keep you. I just wanted to make sure that's on your radar. It's coming in the back of your back of your mind as we go forward on that. Because like I said, we don't want the fair board making one decision. You guys get calls. We just want to make sure everybody's on the same page. So. Yeah, because it's a fine line between having a standard but also accommodating individual situations and stuff. Because I know we've got people out there that have had spots for a long time that have made improvements to their spots right. you know, and want to be able to take advantage of that. And it's, you know, it gives them an opportunity to you know, enhance a little bit of what they're doing. And, you know, they've been long time supporters. So. Yeah. And well, you more and more campers upgrade to a 50 amp uh, breaker, I mean, that's something we'll have to deal with going down the road too because right. 30 amps is pretty common today, but there's more and more well, 50 you would amp campers. Yes. Somehow there could be some common sense involved in all of this too, because if you're, you know, in a 20 foot camper and you move up to a 36 foot camper and your amperage is double, well, you, I mean, you can't expect to be in that same spot to think that it's going to work or that you're not going to cause trouble for somebody. I mean, it just sometimes just a little bit of common sense will help out too. Well, thank you. That's all I have, unless you guys have questions. No, sir. Thank you. All right, I appreciate your time. Thank you. Have a day, Rachel. Thank you. Thanks for being here, Mike. Yeah, thanks for coming. Thanks for coming. Yeah, appreciate it. All right, next on the agenda, Welcome Home Veterans yep. Day proclamation. Okay. Commissioner Gates is going to present this. I think the Fall River right now has a thing. Do you have a thing? Yeah. Oh, I did it in the back. I'll paraphrase it. Uh, so Fall River did that out in the uh, Sturgis and the Veterans deal out there. Uh, what they're basically going to do is on the uh, 29th, I believe it's the 29th, that Tuesday they're going to make that the Welcome Home vet Vietnam Veterans is what they're doing. And in their proclamation basically they had, um, you know, when service members came home at that time, they didn't get a very good Welcome Home. And I guess they're, they're kind of doing this just to say, you know, that we appreciate your service at that time. And, on that, and they're, it's just a proclamation to make the 29th the uh, Welcome Home Vietnam Veterans Day. And they had sent that out to all counties, or auditors, I guess, through the counties to see if anybody else wanted to be on board. And I thought it was kind of a nice nice idea, a nice gesture, I guess. Great. So, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. so you got a motion? Yeah, I'll make a motion to, uh, I guess, to follow through with the proclamation, support the proclamation. I'll second it. Okay, we have a motion from Gage, a second by Fiker to uh, declare the Welcome Home Proclamation for Vietnam Veterans on March 29th. All in the further discussion on that. Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Thanks for bringing that forward. Judy? I think Judy might have been ready. She's here. Judy? Judy. Yeah, here's Judy. Yeah. She's here. Are you ready? Yes. Did you get a little down? No. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. I wish. More I did look. More, uh, more. I did look. I was really pretty close. I had 150,000. So. 
it's up a little bit, but that's the rubber. So, so I called Jerry and talked to Jerry, and he feels very comfortable. And he said this is just a straight up bed. And um, he had said he's not worried about the insulation cost, but um, he's got it work that he's very comfortable with the rubber coat that he, ca he called he called all his um, guys that he buys it from to see the increases in when, what they think is coming down the road. So he said he's very comfortable. So. I'll okay. move it. Motion by Fikert. Second. Second by Gage to approve the uh, city roofing quote of a dollar fifty per <laughs> four <laughs> foot. Yep. All right, so all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. That's for insulation. It's 167000 for it. Right, right. Yes, 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 for the roof. Yeah. Okay. For four foot of whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. All right. All right. So you're still here. That's good. You're smiling. Sorry. <laughs> 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 Yep. <laughs> we'll keep them. How many square feet is that that they're doing? It's, let me see, I think the square footage of this building is like 12,800. So, I have it in my spec. I put a square footage, but that's not including the little, the upper part where the um, air, the chiller unit is. Because mm -hmm. there's two different roofs, because I have to keep the, the upper roof, um, is, you know, concrete so they can adhere it. Um, the lower roof above us here, um, you know, it's built for a, or ready for another floor. So I have to actually ballast that. So that's all rock ballasted where the upper roof is just fully adhered. Mm -hmm. So. All right. Yep. Two different deals. Two different deals. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Have a good day. Yes, you too. All right, that brings us to the end of our uh, regular agenda. Is there any further business or any additional business to come before the Brown County Commission before we go through our list? Any public comment today? Hearing none, we'll let Kathy go through her list. All right, we have the general meeting minutes from March 8th. Move. Second. Motion by Fikert, second by Weiss. Approve the minutes. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Claims and payroll. Move. Motion by Weiss. Second by Gage. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carries. HR report. Move. Motion by Feldheim. Second by Weiss. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carries. We have um, fair contract. Move. Second. Motion by Fikert, second by Weiss, to approve the fair contract. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Set hearing and authorize advertising for the weed and chemical bids. Move. Second. Motion by Feldheim, second by Fikert. That after the advertising bids for chemicals, weed chemicals, that all could, in favor. That Go could ahead. get interesting this year because of availability and mm -hmm. price. Mm -hmm. There'll be some, uh, there'll be some there. changes. So, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Authorized advertising the noxious weed and declared pest notice for 2022. Move. Second. Motion by Fikert, second by Gage. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Out of state travel request. Move. Second. Motion by Feldheim, second by Weiss. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. 2021 landfill reverse credit. Move. Second. Motion by Feldheim, second by Fiker. <coughs> All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Claim assignment. Move. Second. Good. Motion by Feldheim, second by Fiker. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Fireworks permit. Move. Motion by Gage. Second. Second by Weiss. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Library contract with the City of Aberdeen. Oh, second. Motion by we, second by Fikert. That's just a one-year contract, right? Yeah, but it's just a one-year contract. For this following this year, 2022. Or 2022. Correct. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Set hearing and authorized advertising county wage study. Move. Second. Motion by Fikert, second by Gage. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 
proposed name. <laughs> Carry some. Lisa? <laughs> Move. Second. Motion by Feldheim, second by Weiss. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Abatement. Oh. Motion by Weiss. Second. Second by Feldheim. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carries. <laughs> End of our laundry list of issues. Ross, do you have anything for us today? I don't believe so. Okay. Anything else to come before the Brown County Commission this morning? Seeing none. Move to adjourn. Motion by Feldheim, second by Gage to adjourn. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carries. We are adjourned. Out the legislature.